The next step involves shimming, which, when done properly, assures the correct front face and back face clearances for trouble-free operation. Of course, if the shafts did not need to be replaced, the shims don't either. Use the shims that you have identified specifically with each shaft. Just remember, same shafts, same shims. If you're installing replacement shafts, you can save yourself time and effort by delaying the assembly of bearing retainers, gears, and lock nuts until you have verified correct shimming. You may need to remove shafts once to adjust shimming before you achieve the proper clearances. Those of you who are comfortable with precise measuring tools and techniques to thousands of an inch should follow the steps outlined in your maintenance manual under Shims, All Models. For a more hands-on method, refer to the table in your manual that provides suggested shims, inches, and note the replacement shaft shim requirements for your pump model. Use standard shim packs to equal the required shim thickness. With both existing and new shim packs, arrange the shims so that the thicker ones are on the outside and the thinner ones on the inside. Place them against the shoulder in the front bearing bore. With the proper shims in place, install the shaft assemblies in the bearing housing with the fluid end up and the drive shaft in proper location to give top or bottom drive as required. Press the shaft into the housing until it's seated against the shim pack. The sleeve shown is a custom tool that presses against the outer race. You can obtain this tool from your Waukesha Cherry Burl distributor. Remember, always press on the outer race only when pressing a shaft and bearing assembly into the gear case. Temporarily secure the shaft assemblies in the gear case with the bearing retainers. Add no silicone sealant at this time because we're just checking clearances. The retainer must seat firmly against the bearing and leave 10 thousandths to 50 thousandths clearance with the gear case. If necessary, use shims between the bearing and retainer. Now, temporarily assemble your pump, minus gears and lock nuts. You can do this with the fluid end up or by securing the body tightly against the gear case with just the body retaining screws. Then, write down the rotor clearances for A, the back face, which can be measured from the front or the port. B, the rotor to body. And C, the front face. Check these clearances against those listed for your pump model in Table 1 in your manual, Standard Rotor Clearances. If your pump application involves high temperatures or products that tend to coat, such as chocolate, you may have special clearance rotors. Contact the factory for proper B and C clearances. You may not achieve the listed clearances the first time. Disassemble and adjust shim thickness to meet these back face clearances. Be sure your back face clearances, or dimension A, for both rotors are identical. This prevents rotor crossover contact. After you've removed the fluid end from the gear case, remove the bearing retainers. Grease the front and rear bearings through the grease fittings until grease is visible around the ball assemblies. Rotating the shafts while you grease helps disperse the grease properly. Hand packing grease into the bearings also is acceptable. Install the grease seals into the bearing retainers with the lip facing out. Coat seal lips with microplate number 555. If your pump is a model 30, you'll find the grease seal has to be pressed slightly farther. Coat the bearing retainer flanges with silicone sealant. For the Universal 2 paint pump and other silicone-free pumps, use Gore-Tex sealant. Then install the bearing retainers. Coat the ID and OD of the oil seals with microplate grease number 555. Press in the oil seals with spring facing out. 
Before installing the timing gears, identify the gear with the single punch mark. It will be the drive gear. Now check the one with the two punch marks. When installed, the two punch marks will straddle the single mark. You'll find it helps to put the rotors at right angles before aligning the timing marks. Then slide the gear with the single punch mark onto the drive shaft and the gear with two punch marks onto the short shaft, again with the two punch marks straddling the single mark of the drive gear. The gears may need to be tapped into position. Slip on the lock washers and apply microplate grease to the threaded area on the shafts and to the face of the lock nuts. When you're removing or torquing the lock nuts, you need to prevent the shaft from rotating. And here are three useful ways of doing it. With a wood or nylon block wedged between the gears, with a rag in the gears, or with a dowel or hardwood block in the rotors. You can tighten the lock nuts with a spanner wrench or drift, but we recommend you use a torque wrench and socket spanner as shown here. Refer to table two for tightening torque. Bend the locking tabs to secure the lock nuts. This handy socket spanner is available from your Waukesha Cherry Burrell distributor. Press a new grease seal into the gear case cover with the spring side facing in. Place silicone sealant on the back of the gear case. Be careful to stay to the inside of the bolt holes. For the Universal 2 paint pump and other silicone free pumps, apply Gore-Tex on the back of the gear case, again staying inside the bolt holes. Lubricate the gear cover's grease seal with microplate number 555 to keep it from running dry against the drive shaft. Then mount the cover assembly over the shaft extension onto the gear case. Be careful to protect the seal from the keyway with tape. Before securing with cap screws, make sure the shaft is centered in the lip seal. Fill the gear cavity with microplate number 140 oil to the proper level. Refer to the oil capacity chart in the operation section of the manual. This is important because over-oiling is a common error. If your pump is side-mounted, it will require more oil in the gear cavity than horizontally ported pumps. Install the fluid end to the gear case assembly and take care not to damage seals as the body is drawn over the shafts. Install rotors and rotor nut assemblies and install the cover. You have now become a part of the Waukesha Cherry Burl pumps tradition. When you follow the procedures we've just covered, your Universal 2 Series pumps will provide long, trouble-free service 